Hello everyone, this is Gold Egamer, bringing you a Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate video, but talking about Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate, which should be hitting our consoles around this time next year. But before I get into that, I'd just like to say happy birthday to Monster Hunter itself. It is now, as of today, 10 years old, as the first game was released in Japan. Monster Hunter on the PS2. Since then, Monster Hunter has come a long way. It's not one of the biggest franchises, but it is one of my favourites. And it's still going strong, and is probably, I would say, still growing in its support. So, probably expect bigger and better things in terms of the fan base and what we will receive back. The more we give, the more Capcom will probably be likely to give us in return so thank everyone else for their support over the last 10 years Capcom's been doing a pretty good job I've been enjoying Monster Hunter now for eight years so well sort of on and off but I've stuck with it I'm very much back into it and I'm very much looking forward to Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate it was a shame we didn't get Monster Hunter 4 but we are getting the expansion version expansion being the better game uh, if Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate is anything to go by there were the missing weapons from Try added back into the game more monsters put into the game which can only mean the same for Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate compared to Monster Hunter 4 speaking of which though as I say it will be an expansion so we can expect more areas more monsters possibly a different dynamics to the game as well. Uh, each of those I'll go through in time. I'd also like to go through the armor skills that are present in the game, most of which are the same, but there have been several differences made to probably over half of the skills that are present. A additions to the skills, so enhancements, critical eyes, made harder in a way, uh, in a, probably in a way to nerf it, uh, and attack up, again has another level to it, but is about equivalent to what it was before. So for this episode, or this video in general, we will mostly be concentrating on the monsters, weapons, arenas, and the skills. I won't go too much over the new monsters, I'd like it still to be a slight surprise to myself, uh, but maybe some some reveals about the older monsters who are returning, each of whom are getting new skill sets, new moves over what they used to have, which is to be expected. But if you don't want to know about any of that, as I said, this is going to be a slight spoiler video. So if you like, still watch the video. I would I would like it if you still enjoyed the video, but maybe watch it without sound. Otherwise, these spoilers will be coming your way. And also a warning to anyone of a photosensitive nature. There are flash bombs in this game, and they will be used. Devil Joe does not go down easily, so a bit of flashing is required. Enjoy the video as it is. And let's start off. And as such, this is the quest Deep Six a Devil Joe, which is to hunt a regular Devil Joe in the sandy plains by day. And as you can see, I am using the A Lightning pair of dual swords. If anyone would like to know about the armor set that I'm using, it is a armor set of set skills. It's not from any one monster, so if anyone would like to know, let me know in the comment section and I will freely give it to you. But we will start off with a bit of general introduction into the monsters for this game. Monster Hunter 4 had a total of 72 monsters, 52 of which were large and 20 being small. Now this is one less than Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate had at 73 with 51 being large and 22 small. But when compared with 
Monster Hunter Try, there were only 35 monsters total. So plenty more monsters in the expansion. And hopefully we can expect the same for Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate compared to Monster Hunter 4. It's already been announced that there will be a new region or a new area in Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate which will be a desert region. Deserts have always been in Monster Hunter but for some reason were lacking from Monster Hunter 4. But they make a, a return and hopefully with their return will come monsters that were either missing from Monster Hunter 4 that were present in older games or perhaps even some new monsters that Capcom haven't actually even developed yet. Such returning monsters could be the likes of Diablos and also maybe Cephadrome and Monoblos who have been missing since Monster Hunter Free or, uh, Freedom Unite. Sorry. So they would make a welcome return. I've missed fighting Monoblos in particular. Cephadrome being just a sand plesioth and well let's be honest no one likes plesioth. However a bit more expansion into the monsters that are in this game. A total of the 72 on Monster Hunter 4, 56 were returning monsters. So I would expect that every single one of those will be in the new game. As well as the new monsters that were for this game only, of which that was 16. It, the habit has been with the expansions to add even more monsters and also subspecies for the monsters that they newly brought in. So for the monsters that were present in this game that were new, say the spider or the snake, I'm not going to try their Japanese names because that would be hopeless, but we may see some subspecies of that type. Also new to this game were not so much the returning monsters, but some of them had subspecies themselves, such as Bazarios and Tigrex. We probably won't see any more of those type of monsters, but like I say, the new monsters that came in will most likely get subspecies of their own, as well as maybe some older monsters come back, like I say, like Diablos, who may return to the desert region, as it has always been his area, or her area, I should say. There are several different types of monsters. There are the amphibians, of which there are three. I won't go through them all. Most of them, again, have the Japanese names. I would prefer to get to know them by their English names when they're released. So there are three amphibians, 15 bird wivens, such as Jaggy, Young Kuku, who is returning, and uh, who else? Gypseros, Velocidrome, uh, Brute wivens, being Brachydios, Devil Joe, and Savage Devil Joe. It would be nice to see a subspecies for Brachydios. Uh, either a normal subspecies, as in a Brachydios with a coloured name in front of him, uh, like Azure, Rathalos, or Pink, Raytheon. It would be nice to see something for Brachydios. Devil Joe, I'm not expecting anything new. He's bad enough when he goes Savage. There is one completely new type of monster which is called the Chelicaratas. Uh, I believe this is the spider monster of which he is the only one of his type. There are six fanged beasts, uh, most of which are returning monsters from Monster Hunter Freedom Unite, Conga, Congolala, a new subspecies Emerald Congolala and also Rajang. Lagombi also returns from the previous game. Only two fanged wivens, that being Sinoga and Stygian Sinoga. But the largest by far in terms of grouping is the flying wivens, and why not? A lot return from the second gen games Akantor, Bazarios, Gravios, Kezu, Tigrex, and also the franchise favourites Rathalos and Raytheon. And all of those monsters, with the exception of a Cantor, all have subspecies as well. There will be five herbivores to hunt, as well as the two Linians, Feline and Melanx, who again, franchise favourites, have not been missing from any single game yet. 
There will also be five Neopterons, uh, two of which are returning, three of which are new. One Piscine Wyvern, that being Delix. Two Snake Wyverns, one returning from Freedom Unite, Remobra. And the new snake that I think most of us have seen, the big giant snake that looks like it probably just came out of the Chamber of Secrets. And then the final two types were the Elder Dragons, of which there are ten, and then the Question Mark. Question Mark is Gormagala, which is the flagship monster. However, interestingly enough, I discovered the other day that he's not actually the final offline boss. He has he is the more juvenile form of a monster called Shagaru Majara, a gold and white version of himself which is the elder dragon so I can only assume that Gormagala is the younger dragon. So enough about the monsters, I'm not going to go into them too much but the returning monsters will obviously have new moves, some have new subspecies. Interesting I thought from Capcom's point of view that they put in the bird weapons from the second gen and third gen in the same game. So Gendrome, Velocidrome, Iodrome, along with Great Jaggy, Great Baggy and Great Roggy. I'm not sure how the ecosystem will work there, whether you will encounter both monsters in the same area, perhaps they have a rivalry, uh, as with uh, Agnactor and Brachydios. Or maybe they will reside in completely different areas of the same map and never interact with each other. But having both in the same game will be interesting. Especially if you have multiple monster quests with them in them. But moving away from the monsters now, we'll move on to probably what is most known about the game and that is the weapons. There will be a total of 14 weapons, 12 of which are returning and 2 of which are new. So we are not losing any of the weapons, all of the existing weapons return. The melee weapons being sword and shield, dual blades, greatsword, longsword, hammer, hunting horn, lance, gun lance and switch axe. And the three returning gunner weapons, the light, bow gun, the heavy bow gun and the bow. As most of people are aware now, the new weapons are the charge axe and insect rod. Very interesting weapons. Uh, the Charge Axe, I believed initially, was going to be a merge of the Sword and Shield and Switch Axe. But no, they are present in the game as well. So it will be interesting to see how choice will affect what weapon uh, you use during certain quests. Obviously, the Charge Axe is now able to shield and attack somewhat like a Sword and Shield but then has the sword mode similar to the switch axe. So, very interesting. I thought they were going to take switch axe and sword and shield out and then replace it with this weapon, but apparently not. And also, the weapon with the worst name in the game, the insect rod. This is the double-ended staff weapon with the bug on the end going to be a very interesting weapon. Apparently the bug is able to feed off of monsters that you aim at, at be it health, stamina. Uh, but also, interestingly enough on the wiki, it does say something along the lines of the bug must be fed before the weapon can be upgraded. This is slightly unknown to me, I'm not quite sure what this will mean, whether it means that you have to actually fight with the weapon a couple of times and not use the bug, charge it up while fighting the monster and then come out and upgrade your weapon then. Do you make your weapon and it's already fully fed? Can you build weapons straight from the bottom straight to the top? Not sure on that one. Um, but it's going to be a very interesting weapon. It's one of the weapons that I'm probably looking forward to trying out the most. I usually try out the newer 
weapons in this game or this game franchise so last uh, game you could imagine that my main weapon was the switch axe moving on again um, to be fair the weapons don't have too much to say about them other than that they are all getting the returning weapons are all getting new moves over what has been their existing so I mean the, the longsword had the addition of the spirit slash in the third gen games uh, Crouching Fire and Rapid Fire were added in the third games for the Heavy and Light Bowgun respectively. So it'll be interesting to see what else they're going to add. Moving on to the areas. In Monster Hunter 4, there were 14 areas. However, like I said before, we have been guaranteed at least one new area being the desert. So the existing names for the 14 areas already in the game are Ruins Field. This is the equivalent of Moga Woods, essentially. This is the first area that you will have access to, where you go on your first missions to gather raw meat and make well done stakes. The beginner's level quests. There are also the Primeval Forest underground cave. The underground cave is a very interesting one because as I've read it sits next to a dormant volcano which at some point during the game erupts and becomes the underground volcano which is a completely different area so almost levolution to use a battlefield 4 term there. I'm not sure how this will work whether you can still access the old map after this levolution but I would assume so that in lower ranked quests where this potentially happen hasn't happened underground volcano may be becoming accessible in high rank who knows that you can still access both the other areas are the frozen sea heavenly mountain tower top so this will be the arena style area that you can fight I believe it's the Tigrex rare species as well as the Kirin subspecies that's been added as well as other event style monsters unknown great forest is another area as well as great desert now great desert has been used in the last game as the place to fight Genmaran and also hello Genmaran so, it stands to reason that this will be where we will now fight Darren Moran. For a bit of trivia, I, I wasn't aware of it in the past, but apparently you could see a town in the Great Desert from uh, Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate, which was Loch Lac City. This has been replaced in this Great Desert by Barubare, which is your home town, for want of a better word which you will see very early on in the game so not too much spoilers there but maybe a, a suggestion the last few areas are the forbidden grounds lava island thousand blade mountain arena and 3d arena and these are all essentially arena type areas for super monsters or event style monsters Particularly Lava Island, I know that a Cantor is seen there. Uh, and the Arena and 3D Arena will be slightly different to what we've seen before. Uh, with the addition of the ability to do a jump attack. Then this means that the Arena itself has now had ledges added into it. Allowing for gunners to climb up onto the ledge and be relatively safe perhaps for a short amount of time before the ledge is destroyed if it can be destroyed and also for blade masters to do a jumping attack or to climb on top of the monsters the 3d arena i am assuming is, is exactly what it sounds like multi-platforms as with the other arenas the climbing in this game has been greatly enhanced 
it's made quicker, more dynamic, you can move in any direction. And I know, especially in Ruins Field from the trailers, where you f fight Tigrex, there is an area in there which has at least two levels. So 3D Arena, I can only expect, will be exactly the same. And of course, we will see select monsters in select parts of each area. As I said, Darren Moran is probably going to be the only monster you see in Great Desert, but Tigrex is littered throughout the game. And Diab... Uh, not Diablos. Grabios and Bazarios now do not exclusively exist in the volcano regions. They have been seen also in the forested regions, uh, primeval forest and unknown great forest, I believe. Although this may not be Gravios and Bazarius, but more maybe their subspecies. The new Bazarius subspecies seems particularly to inhabit grassland areas. Also from the trailer it was possible to see a large shark-like amphibian, one of the three in the game, and he will reside in the frozen sea, being the only ice area in the game so far. As I said, Desert is returning. This could mean that new monsters are coming in to fill that void where this new area is. Uh, it is almost certain that Genprey will return to the desert, as well as Gendrome, being one of their habitats in Monster Hunter Freedom Unite. But new monsters again, like I said before, it would, like, it would be nice to see Cephadrome return. He has been absent for a very long time and Diablos to make a return, having been missing from Monster Hunter 4, as well as Bazarios and White Bazarios. Not Bazarios, I'm getting it mixed up now. Monoblos and White Monoblos. However, with the presence of Delix in the game, who essentially took the place of Cephalos, this may not actually happen. Delix also being more than likely to inhabit this desert region, as they did in Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate. But I would like to assume that a brand new monster would be brought in for a brand new area. At least one. One that we haven't seen before. Uh, a lot of the monsters that were in the volcano region... Uh, not the volcano region. I'm getting really tired now. In the desert region of Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate are not returning. Volvedon does not return. Neither does Diablos. Devil Joe does, Quiripeco does not, so it will be interesting to see what monsters actually make it into the desert area. Any other areas, again, as an expansion, we have another year to go, I would say, so it's more than possible that another area could be released. Geoprey did not return to this game. Uh, they were brought into Monster Hunter Freedom Unite as the fourth bird with an family, in a way, to go along with Velocidrome, Gendrome, and Iodrome. So if a snowy region could be added, maybe they could be added as well, but they are not present in the Frozen Sea at this time. Now moving on to the skills present in Monster Hunter for Ultimate. Based on what is present in Monster Hunter 4, several of the skills that were present in the previous games are returning. However, a lot of them have been enhanced and completely new ones added. Of course, as a new game, this is to be expected. This probably will not be a full list, more again could be added as an expansion, or I may not have the full list here, I can only go by what the wiki has. But the new skills are as follows. Acrobat. So acrobatics, or acrobat, was present somewhat in Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate as feline acrobat. It was a food skill, now it is an armor skill. And it has the effect of having evasion plus one, 
constitution plus one and evade extender. Several, well, as you can see from that skill alone, that is several skills added into one. And plenty of the skills that I'm looking at right now are like that, including the next one, Amplifier. Same effect as element attack up and item use up. Anti-theft returns, artillery returns but with a new level, a third level, artillery master, which is described as a large increase as opposed to a small or a moderate increase to Ballista, Cannon, Crag S, Gunlance and Wooden Fight. The artillery expert and artillery master also come with a reduced cooldown for the weapon fire so you can do your next weapon fire quicker. Attack up gains an XL section which is attack up 25. Auto guard returns as does bio student with a new level bio master which in addition to negating slime blight and stench and increasing dung bomb efficiency also decreases feral virus duration. Feral virus being the new status that is exclusive to Gormagala as the infestation status that he has where he can revive dead monsters and infect hunters. Blightproof, Bombardier, all of the bow ammo coatings return as do the gun lance, uh, not gun lance, bow gun ammo increases they return as well. Carnivore, carving as an extra level, carving master which can increase the number of calves to one or two and minor attacks won't interrupt you. Charm Collector, different to Charmer, this is known as increasing your chance to gain more items while gathering and more charms while mining, as opposed to Charm Chaser, which has two extra levels, Charm Hunter and Charm Master, which give a higher chance to receive extra charms. So charm collector is not just charms, it's items in general. Cold resistance returns, as do combo plus and combo rate. Commander returns. Now commander replaces the shakalaka skills, as this is a feline skill, who re also return from Monster Hunter Freedom Unite. So during quests, felines will have an increased attack, defense, and stamina recovery, and also gain the ability to be revived by signaling them, which could be quite handy as the Chachas took a very long time in the previous game to revive after they had been knocked out. Constitution makes a return, as does defense, and as with attack, it has an XL plus 25 added to it. Deathlock. Heartbreaker. All of the status attack skills now have a plus three. So where plus one is a dragon based attack will be 1.05 times normal. Plus 40. Dragon attack plus two is dragon based attacks will be 1.1 times normal plus 60. And dragon attack three will be 1.15 times normal plus 90. And this will be the same for all the other elements. Fire, ice, water. The next skill is Dragon Resistance, which returns. It doesn't get anything extra, and again, neither do the other elemental resistances. Speed Eating returns, as does Hone Blade. Element Attack Up stays as it was, it doesn't get an extra level as the individual attacks do, which may increase the chance that the hunters will use individual element attack ups as opposed to the all round element attack up, as they are capped at 1.1 times normal. So essentially the same level as a dragon attack plus two or other elemental attack plus two, but even then, on plus two of a certain element, they have plus 60 added on top. 
So the individual elemental attacks are attack boosts are definitely better than elemental this time around. Evade distance returns as does evasion which has an extra slot on it. Evasion plus three greatly increases invincibility time while evading. Expert returns that's critical eye the increasing of affinity that you can do however it has been adjusted the cap is still plus 30 as it was in the previous game however you require more points to get there now essentially the, the affinity up goes in 10 15 20 and 30 and that is the exact amount of points you will need to gain each level so there is now critical eye plus one two three and critical master fast charge returns that's focus Great sword, hammer, and bow charge time is 0.8 times normal. Long sword, dual sword, and switch axe gauges fill up 1.2 times normal rate. Fate returns. This is to do with luck. Your chance of getting quest rewards has a new increase. Above great luck is now super luck. Mind's eye returns. And a new one will be dancer, which is finesse. Increases the distance of your evasive maneuvers while at full health. Your attack damage is also increased. Which sounds very much like... What was it called? I can't remember what it was called, but the... Skill that you used to get for not being damaged at all. You used to be have an increased attack rate. And possibly affinity as well, I can't remember. Firm defense is a new one, impregnable. Defense is increased and immune to defense down. How much it's increased by is not said, but it not only increases to a certain degree, but it cannot be decreased by Banahabra, or the Devil Joe Bite, etc. Flame Aura returns, Free Element and Fury, all of which were the same as they were before. The gathering skills has an extra level, gathering master, gloves off, gluttony return, greedy a new skill, increases the number of quest and capture rewards. Guard, guard 1, guard 2 and guard up return, guts, handicraft, health, hearing, heat resistance, honey, negate hunger are all the same. Infection resistance, which is the increasing of the chance to cure the fear of virus if you are infected, which could be a very useful skill where Gormagala is definitely going to appear. Knockout King, lasting power. Martial arts is a new skill. Punishing skill, adds exhaust and stun damage when performing an unsheathed attack as well as greatly reducing the time to sheath your weapon. So essentially, sheathing added in with exhaust coatings in a way. And KO King. Maestro, Mud Snow Negate, Paralysis, all, this, all of these status negations are back. Negate Paralysis, Negate Poison, Negate Stun. Perception being Capture Guru returns. Potential, which is Adrenaline. Makes a return as well and I believe has the same stats as it did before. A new skill is Precise Attack, known as Ruthless. When hitting a monster's weak spot, attacks will be stronger as well as receiving Affinity plus 15. Which I believe will most likely be an enhancer to Tenderizer which was present in Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate. Precision, Protection, Psychic, Punish Draw, Ranger, Recovery Level, Recoil Reload, Recovery Speed, All Return, Rider is a new one. To fit in with the fact that you can now ride the monsters and attack from their backs, this skill has been added. Which means that when you are riding the monster, your attacks will fill up your gauge quicker. Which I believe means you can stay on the monster for longer. 
sneak, speed sharpening, and razor sharp return, as does quick sheath on its own. Shielder, or shield up, gives you the ability to block unblockable attacks, and stamina recovery speed is two times normal. So this will be guard boost and stamina recovery up in one skill. Single minded, uh, otherwise known as synergy. Great sword, hammer, and bow charge time is 0.8 times normal. Long sword, dual blade, and switch axe gauges fill up one times to the normal rate, which is essentially what we had before with focus. With the addition of being able to consume raw meat, which gives stamina plus 50, which is a lot of stamina. I think each level is worth 10. Other meat halt stamina loss for one minute. Speed gather, speed setup, challenger, stamina drain, stamina, stamina recovery up or return, as do status attack up, wellness, silver bullet, and fortify. With the felines returning to new skills, team leader and team player, not so much new skills, but just aimed instead of shakalakas at the felines instead. So felines can be revived by signaling them, can be used once every 10 minutes, and also feline rally or team player increases felines attack and defense. Possibly useful on solo hunts, definitely not on multiplayer. Tenderizer returns, so that's weakness exploit. Torso up, so undoubtedly several armor types will, instead of having select skills, just have torso up. Tranquilizer returns with an extra level. Capture master, which maximizes the number of capture rewards you obtain. Transporter, tremor resistance, unscathed, which is the skill I was thinking about earlier, peak performance when you are more powerful at full health. However, peak performance only accounts for attack, whereas the other skill was affinity as well. Unshakable returns, or rock steady, which was a very interesting skill in the last game. Not very well described, but returns nonetheless. And the last couple of skills are whim, wide range, and wind resistance, all of which are exactly as they were before. So that, as it appears, is the full list of skills that is present in Monster Hunter 4. We may receive new ones in 4 Ultimate, I'm not sure. It possibly depends upon the environment or the new monsters that may come in, although I would expect that these skills will remain the same. Now, as I said, a lot of these skills have extra levels to them, which means that you require more points to attain them. Take the separate elemental attack ups, for example. Thunder attack down is still minus 10. Thunder attack up is still plus 10. Thunder attack 2 is still plus 15, but it requires 20 to attain thunder attack 3. This may be where it is a slight disadvantage to having elemental attack up, as you will undoubtedly lose the ability to have other skills if you sacrifice them to get thunder attack plus three or dragon attack plus three it may be preferable to get elemental attack up and then be able to get another skill as well which could if it was perhaps critical eye or attack up l make up the difference for what you were missing so that is a full list of the areas, monsters, weapons, and areas that are in the game. And as I said before, Gormagala is the new flagship monster, which is going to be a very dangerous monster, but again not the final boss of the quest, or of the game itself offline. The Shaguru Magara or however you pronounce it, is instead, which can only mean that it's of an Alatrion star level. 
Several of the Elder Dragons are returning from the previous game, namely Teostra and Kashala Deora. Probably will have newer moves and will obviously be incredibly dangerous. The monsters that are f first in this game, most of which are completely new, again some have subspecies that have been added and again like I said before with four ultimate there can only be more so I would greatly expect that the next game is going to have a very very increased number of monsters in it more than we've ever had before the standing currently at 72 there will be a new area added there will be new subspecies with new monsters that were brought in as well as completely new monsters which I may have said already so we could be potentially be looking at a late 80s to early 90s in terms of numbers of monsters and this can only mean that G rank will return in Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate as if you were unaware it was absent in Monster Hunter 4 as it was in Monster Hunter Tri it could, you could only get up to high rank which is a bit disappointing uh, but so long as G rank returns to this new game which we are now receiving in the west I will be happy as Larry because I have played currently Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate for a total of over 700 hours I could have played it more, but for various reasons, my game was inaccessible to me. My first Wii U broke, and then my disc was damaged. So I could well have hit over 1,000 hours, which is exactly what I expect from getting this new game. Which hopefully, given it has about a year until release, I am really hoping it will be released for the Wii U. As... I'm sure everyone is most likely aware it is currently only on the 3DS. Monster Hunter 4 was only released on the 3DS, but it was local to Japan and South Korea only. And those are very handheld console countries. Whereas over here in westernized countries, we are more about the home consoles. And of course, it is called Mon MH4U. So it would only make sense that it would come to the Wii U. One can only hope. We are probably, like I said before, about a year away from release. Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate was released in America on the 19th of March last year, 2013. Yes, that's right. And in Europe on the 22nd. So I would be expecting us to be looking around about the week of the 16th of March 2015 for release of Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate for us. Uh, in Europe, as it was a Friday, I would be going with the 20th. America was released on the Tuesday, which could mean the 17th. Uh, but of course I could be a week early or a week late on that. Who knows? I can only guess. But again, it would tie in with essentially the birthday of Monster Hunter next year. Again in March, being on the 11th. So maybe it could be brought forward to that week or the week after. So we can only, only wait and see. Other things I'm interested about this game... The jumping mechanic is going to be very interesting and the climbing on the monsters. I'm going to be interested to see how this works, whether it's going to be a bit too overpowered. But just to wrap up this video, I am very much looking forward to Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. Again, like I said, hopefully it will come to the Wii U, otherwise I will be playing it on the 3DS. And I plan to do Let's Plays in the future on it. Uh, Whoever's watching in the comments, if you would let me know, what would you prefer to see? Would it be YouTube episodes or maybe Twitch live streams? I am open to both. I will probably take time off work just to play this game. 
as the Monster Hunter fanatic that I am. But in the meantime, I will continue to play this game. Unfortunately, this mission had two carts in it, but I was finally able to defeat Devil Joe. If anyone is interested in what weapons were used or the skills, as this is a set piece, it's not one monster's type altogether. It's made from several different monsters. But again, thank you for watching this video. Hit the like button and follow if you uh, if you like. Subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out. And goodbye.